Howdy! In this video what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about volume utilizing cylindrical shells. Okay, so I wanted you to pause the video real quick, jot this down so that we can talk about it, because this is going to be our cheat sheet for all cylindrical shell problems. Okay, now the big question that I get a lot with uh, deal, we already talked about discs and washers, and so now let's talk about cylindrical shells. And the question I get is, well, when do I use disc washers versus when do I use cylindrical shells? Well, we talked about last time when the function equals the axis of rotation, meaning you have a function of x about an x-axis, that's disc washer. But now with cylindrical shells, when your function does not equal the axis of rotation, that's when I'm using cylindrical shells. So if I'm given some function of x rotated about the y-axis, you're using cylindrical shells. And the formula for cylindrical shells volume is equal to the integral of 2 pi r h. Now one thing I need you to note is that r and h completely independent of each other. You will solve for r by itself, you'll solve for h by itself. They have nothing to do with each other. Now the way that you find r is you ask yourself, well, am I rotated about an axis or am I rotated about a number? If you're rotated about an axis, more specifically the y-axis, r is x, period, end of story. And if you're rotated about the x-axis, r is y. Simple enough. But if you're rotated about a number, sketch it out. And it's going to be the exact same thought process that we used previously with discs and washers. Okay, so if you don't know how that works, if you haven't seen discs and washers yet, go to disc washer part one, so you can see what I mean as to how to find R in that same process uh, whenever we are going to be rotated about a number. Now, in order to find H, your height, this is easy too, because if you have one function, hey, H is your function. Done. If you have two functions, H is going to be top minus bottom, okay? And how do you find top and bottom? just like we did with area, and just like we did uh, back with disc washers as well, okay? So, use this our cheat sheet, and we're going to go ahead, and I want you to keep this out, and let's go ahead and do four examples. Let's talk about all the different combinations you can see for utilizing cylindrical shells. So, for number one, it says, find the volume of the solid by revolving the region bounded by y equals 2x squared minus x cubed, and the x-axis rotated a about the y-axis. Well, check this. What you have is you have a function of x, but it's going to be rotated about the y-axis. These do not match here, x's and y's. And because of that, that's why I know I'm using cylindrical shells. That's why I know that volume will be the integral of 2 pi r h. Now, let's find r and let's find h independent of each other. How to find R. R, if you're rotated about an axis, in this case I'm rotated about the y axis, R equals x. Period. So that was nice. Let's find H. If I want to find H, H depends on do I have one function or do I have two functions? Hey, guess what? I got one function. I got that 2x squared minus x cubed. So h is that function, 2x squared minus x cubed. Therefore, volume is just going to be the integral of 2 pi. My r is x. My h is 2x squared minus x cubed dx. But, ooh, I wasn't given any bounds. So let's see. So let's come back up to here. I have y is 2x squared minus x cubed, and it's bounded by this and the x-axis. If you see this x-axis, that's just y equals 0, right? y equals 0 is the x-axis. And if it's bounded by this guy and y equals 0, well, to find my limits of integration, let's see where they intersect. So, uh, to find our bounds out here, okay, so I'm going to use this to find my bounds. I'm going to set 2x squared minus x cubed equal to 0. I can factor out an x squared. I'm left with 2 minus x. And so what I get is that x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 2. That would be number 1. Okay, so that was a relatively straightforward one. It was about an axis. You had a function. Cool. 
Well, let's get harder. Let's take a look at number two. Let's see, here's number two. We'll put this off to the side. We'll come back to that later. Okay, so for number two, it says, find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the region y equals x squared and the x-axis, x equals 1, x equals 2, about x equals 3. Okay, well notice I have a function of x, and since I'm rotated about x equals 3, here's 3, notice how x equals 3 is parallel to the y-axis. So what I have, I have a function of x, about a y-axis, x and y, that doesn't match up, and because of that, I'm using cylindrical shells, 2 pi rh. So what we need to do is we need to find r, and we need to find h independent of each other. So let's find r. r this time isn't going to be so easy. r is not going to be so easy this time, because I'm not rotated about an, uh, an axis, I'm rotated about a number. So let's sketch it out. Okay, so let's see. So we got y equals x squared and the x-axis, but I only want it in between 1 and 2. So y equals x squared is a parabola. It would probably come up, you know, like that. Between 1 and 2. Okay, so here is my solid that I'm rotating. And we're going to rotate it about x equals 3. Okay, so I'm rotated about this. So let's go ahead and look probably something like that. Ugh. Get the general idea. Okay. This would be that said radius. Okay. Now, as for the radius, that's from the original function. Okay? Don't find the radius from where you rotate it. It's from the original function. This is my r, okay? This is kind of like whenever I rotated about it, it would reach all the way out here, but as for your radius, you're measuring from here. Now, r, once again, is kind of floating out in space, so I don't know what it is, but I do know this. I do know the distance from here to 3, right? The distance from the y-axis to x equals 3, well, it's always 3. And the distance from the y-axis over to your function is always dependent on what? We talked about that from the very first picture I ever drew for y'all. That's x, okay? That is x. And so what is r equal to? Well, r is going to be this distance 3 minus that x. r is going to be that distance 3 minus that x. And then as for h, I'm going to find h. h isn't too bad. Because remember, for h, one function or two functions. I only have one function. I've got y equals x squared. And so h is just that function. h is just x squared. Therefore, if I want to find volume, volume is going to be the integral. Now, as for my original region, that was in between 1 and 2, right? So 1 from 1 to 2 of 2 pi. My r, 3 minus x. My h is x squared. Let's go from there. Okay. So that's how we deal with um, whenever it's rotated about not quite an axis. R is a little bit more complicated. But notice h didn't change. h is solely dependent on how many functions you have. So now let's get harder. All right, let's get a little bit trickier now. So now, let's take a look at number three. Number three says, find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating about the x-axis, the region bounded by x equals y minus 2 squared and y equals x. Now, this is the cylindrical section area. And so, since I'm rotated about the x-axis, I want a function of y, and that's what I'm given here. Here, I'm given that x is equal to y minus 2 squared, and here x is equal to y, okay? So because you have some g of y about the x-axis, and these guys do not match up, that's how I know that I'm using cylindrical shells. Just 2 pi r h. And just like before, let's find r and h independent of each other. Let's find r. Now as for r, you're only looking at my rotated about the x-axis or y-axis, and hey look, I'm about the x-axis. 
And whenever you're about the x-axis, that's nice and easy. What's r? Yeah, r is just y. Done. Cool. So r equals y. That was nice. But what about h? Notice now how I'm given two functions. And if h... Um, so in h, what h is going to be, it's going to be top minus bottom if you have two functions. So what I need to do is i got to figure out which one's on quote-unquote top and which one's on bottom. So let's go ahead and do that, just like we did with area and just like we did previously in disk washer. So if you remember, step one was to set them equal to each other. So y minus 2 squared is equal to y. When I expand this y minus 2 squared, it's going to be y squared minus 4y plus 4 is equal to, oops, y. I can subtract that y over to the other side, and I have y squared minus 5y plus 4 is equal to 0, which we can factor into y minus 4 times y minus 1 is equal to 0. And what I get is that y is 4 and y is 1. And hey, we've got our limits of integration, so that's cool. That's where they intersected. Now let's just see which one's, technically it's going to be to the right, but which one's on quote-unquote top, right? So, taking a look in between 1 and 4, okay, and I've got x, which is y minus 2 squared. i got x, which is y, and let's, uh, let's pick 2. 2 is uh, randomly in between 1 and 4. I plug 2 into each. Here I get that x is equal to 0. Here I get x is equal to 2. 2 is bigger than 0. So there's your top. Which, if r is equal to y, is going to tell me that h, so I just wanted to circle that, that had nothing to do with h, h is going to be the top minus bottom. And so h is y minus y minus 2 squared. And now that I have r, now that I have h, volume. Volume is going to be the integral. My bounds are from 1 to 4 of 2 pi. My r is y, and my h is y minus y minus 2 squared. I would definitely expand that and, of course, simplify and go from there. But that's how you would set that up. Okay. So now we've dealt with h's two functions. We've dealt r with about an axis, about a number. But one thing we haven't done, we haven't done the two hardest ones together. So let's go ahead and do that. What we're going to do next, and finally, is we're going to have two functions rotated about not an axis, about a number. So we're going to put the hardest possible scenarios for each together. So what I want to do here for number four, find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the region bounded by y equals 18 minus x squared and y equals x squared about x equals 3. Notice how I have two functions, but that function is a function of x. And I already showed you how x equals 3 right, is parallel to the y-axis. So we've got like a y-axis. And because these do not match up, that's why I'm using cylindrical shells. That's why I know I'm doing the integral of 2 pi r h. Okay, so let's find r and let's find h. Let's find r. I'm not rotated about a number, so we're going to have to sketch this out. Now, 18 minus x squared is an upside-down parabola with a y-intercept of 18. And then y equals x squared, of course, is just your basic parabola. But when I do that, watch what's about to happen. You have an upside-down parabola, but then you would have this parabola right here, the y equals x squared. And they would at some point intersect. So let's actually knock a couple of birds out with one stone. Here, this is going to be y equals x squared, and your top is going to be 18 minus x squared. While we're at it, let's go ahead and find out where they intersect. Okay, Because I don't know where to put my axis of rotation if I don't know where this is, right? So we got to see where they intersect. So I know that 18 minus x squared equals x squared. So 18 is 2x squared. 9 is x squared. They intersect at both plus and minus 3. So this point right here is going to be negative 3. This point right here is going to be positive 3. And now I know where to put my axis of rotation. Your axis of rotation, x equals 3, it decided to rotate right here. Okay. Okay. So now that I have that, let's we'll rotate it. So when I rotate it, 
something like that, and something. Once again, not the prettiest drawing, but you all get the idea. Okay. Here is my R. Here's my R. Okay. Well, once again, R is kind of floating out in space. I don't know what R is, but I do know that the distance from here to here is 3. And I do know the distance from the y-axis over to your function, that's always x. And so therefore, I know that my r is going to be this distance 3 minus x. 3 minus x. And as for my h, h is top minus bottom. And hey, what's nice about drawing this, I know top and bottom. I know that my top is 18 minus x squared minus the bottom, which is x squared, which of course you can always just rewrite as 18, not 12, minus 2x squared. Now that I have r, now that I have h, you can set up your integral. Your final answer, volume. Volume is the integral of your where it originally was, not whatever is being rotated, your original function before rotation. And that's in between negative 3 and 3 of 2 pi, my r, 3 minus x, my h, 18 minus 2 x squared. And this is how you deal with cylindrical shells.